Introduction to Parent Functions. Our objective is to identify parent functions from graphs and equations, as well as use parent functions to model real-world data and make estimates for unknown values. Who uses this? Oceanographers use transformations of parent functions to approximate data sets, such as wave height versus wind speed. Well, what exactly is a parent function? A parent function is the simplest function with the defining characteristics of the family. Let's look at some. These are examples of parent functions. So a constant would be when y equals, say, 7. It's going to be a horizontal line at y is 7. A linear function is when f of x equals x. A quadratic is when you have a parabola, so x squared. A cubic is when you have f of x equals x to the third, so that's a cubic function. And then you have a square root, which would be when f of x equals the square root of x. There are others, but these are the most common. Let's look at identifying transformations of parent functions. Identify the parent function for g from its function rule. Then graph g on your calculator and describe what transformation of the parent function it represents. Let's start with this first one. g of x equals x plus 5. So First off, we know that because it's not a square, it's not only a constant, we're going to have a linear function. So therefore, we know that this is linear. We'll start with that. So now in your graphing calculator, you're going to stick this in there. g of x is like the same thing as saying y. So in your graphing calculator, when you have the y equals, right after that you'll just insert this x plus 5. So now that you can see the graph, what does the graph appear to have done versus just your y equals x? Yeah, it's gone up 5. So it's translated... up 5 units. Alright, take a moment and pause the video and try B now. Alright, well B has got a squared in it here, so therefore G of X is a quadratic. And now we need to decide what the translation is that occurred. So when you're looking at your graphing calculator, what do you see is the difference between this new function here and y equals x squared? Yeah, it appears to have moved to the right three places. So it is translated. three units to the right. Let's look at another example. Let's look at identifying parent functions to model data sets. We're going to graph the data from the table and then describe the parent function and the, term and the transformation that best approximates the data set. So let's start by plotting each of these points in the graph. All right, so now that you have, it, have the graph, you can start looking at your comparison. Well, if we look at the point 2, 2, for example, essentially this is saying the same thing as 2 and then half of 4, which would be this 4 right here would be the, the parent function 
for the quadratic. So it's half of that value. Well, let's see if that pattern continues. So let's just take 4 and 8. Now in the parent function, normally that would be 2, 16. Well, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So therefore, if you think about it, the data set seems to represent a vertical compression. So I'll write that down for you guys. A vertical compression. of the parent function by a factor of one half. All right, so recap. Linear, so your linear function is going to be at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So that's your parent function for your linear. For your quadratic, you're going to have a point at 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 4. For a cubic, you're going to have one that starts at 0, 0, and then you'll have one at negative 1, negative 1, and positive 1, positive 1. For the parent function of a square root, you're going to start with 0, 0, go to 1, 1, and then you'll be at 4, 2. So it might be helpful to add the graphs of the parent functions to your notes so you have something to refer back to. Let's look at an oceanography application. An oceanographer wants to determine a model that can be used to estimate wind speed based upon wave height. Graph the relationship from wave height to wind speed and identify which parent function best describes it. Then use the graph to estimate the wave height when the wind speed is 10 knots. When you come back the graph will be there. Alright so now that we have our graph we can use the graph to estimate the wave height when the wind speed is 10 knots. So at 10 knots, we go across, and it's going to be about 2.5 feet high. And that ends our lesson on introduction to parent functions.